and welcome back to Dead Pit Radio. Creepy Kentucky in here. And I'm Uncle Bill. Hi. It's nice Ooh. to see you. Ooh. It's good to have you all here. It's good to see you, Uncle Bill. We have a uh, very special review today requested from our good friend Dumal, a.k.a. William, who always picks these bizarre movies that we would probably never, ever watch otherwise. And this was one that was tough to kind of track down, okay? Because it's a French movie, subtitles, right? So the ways that we get these movies, sometimes we're influenced by Steve. I guess I'll just say that. <laughs> right. And There's the big influence on that. Dude, like I tried like subtitle after subtitle and it was, it, all of them were fucked up. So I just said, fuck it and bought it on our voodoo. And we finally got it that way. It was difficult. The movies with subtitles are just. Yeah. I feel easy. like this guy though, that is requesting these movies is trying to give us like cultured. I feel like he's trying. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah. Like every new movie he's like, these dumb asses need to watch something. <laughs> I'm I want to make them watch some real shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is definitely a different movie than anything that we've ever really talked about on here. Um, one really interesting thing about it is the, the Italian maestro of horror himself, Dario Argento, is the, one of the stars of this movie, acting. It's his acting debut in this French movie. Who, who, who knew that Argento even spoke in French? He learned French for this fucking movie. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Holy yeah, well, I, I think he probably knew some uh prior to this but yeah i remember reading up on this and this is such a weird story number one it's weird because like i would have never thought Dario argento could act like it's just not something that even entered my mind like he i don't think he ever did anything like that to my knowledge like mm -hmm. to to be like a lead character so i was expecting it to be horrible because of that number two though yeah so gasper noe which is how you pronounce that fucking guy's name i found out uh, who, directed the, who directed the film convinced Argento to do it and then he like heavily like had to learn French but apparently he still got like an Italian accent in French if that makes sense like so well they said he, he was Italian it. though in the movie so yeah he learned the French but like it's heavily accented like I guess we would be you know if we tried to learn French in six what months would yeah what would the accent be like if we fucking tried to be <laughs> so killer the people be like Who's this? Is it? Who the hell is this? Who is this? Who pop pop pop? Pimpin' the pie. Oh fucking! You remember Miss Gross? What not her name? Like the uh, high school know. French teacher. I never took French. Oh, God, that woman was insufferable. She looked just like the uh, well, that Kim woman from Halloween Six. Oh God. Yeah, Kim Darby. Anyway, that's aside from the point. All that being said, like yeah, so. Um, yeah, Gaspar Noe convinced him to do this movie, and I'm not entirely sure why he did it. I know this movie is based on Gaspar Noe's real life because his mother had dementia and he like took care of her, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where the whole concept of it came from. Well, but, the the director though, Gaspar Noe, no that's way, even, that's even better. Gaspar, no way, yeah. Irreversible is his big movie that kind of got his name out there. And he's always done these bizarre art house, you know, very creative filmmaker for sure. Um, End of the Void, I think, was another one that he did that was, you know, highly regard, you know, critically acclaimed, I guess. I'm not a filmmaker either, but the way that he designed this movie is as if to give you an idea if you're seeing this on this video here me and uncle bill filming a movie side by side two separate screens exactly, it looks exactly like this yeah following two separate people most of the time they're in the same room most of the time it's in like a different part of the house but it's the same shot and man like i got to say 
you know, it's almost like as if this dude was fucking showing off how good he can edit these movies together and have them flow. Um, because yeah, two pictures side by side there. Uh, the only shot in the entire movie where I think it's one continue, you know, one big screen is the very beginning, right? And then they kind of separate. Separate. So, and this was such a interesting technique that I don't, I'm, I'm sure somebody else has done this, but I don't remember ever seeing a movie like that was filmed like this. And I, so I was reading up on the reasoning for why it was filmed the way that it was. And it's kind of sh- trying to show like the separation of the characters from as she's like sh- slowly losing her mind from mm-hmm. the dementia it's showing how like they're in the same place but they're disconnected like one now, of them is here and one of them is kind of like in a different you may get be a good person to ask this though and i don't know how much you know about dementia or anything but the character in this francois lebron lebrun francois is the actress's <laughs> name francois francois lebrun now her character L, I think Louie and L is their names in the movie. Although I don't know if they really, there's not really a whole lot of dialogue in this movie either. I guess no. we should say it's French. You got to read it, which I hate. Like, I know that it's probably not the cool thing to say, but why can you not dub movies anymore, man? Like I would just really appreciate English dubs on movies because if you're focusing reading the movie the entire time, even though, you know, there's not a whole lot of dialogue in this, but part of it takes me out of the movie, I think. Cause that's not the uh hoity toity way to do things anymore. You gotta <laughs> fucking you gotta read this movie and who the fuck are you? I'm a guest bar <laughs> no way. You you <sighs> pronounce my name completely differently than <laughs> guess bar, no way. <laughs> no way, Jose, you read the fucking subtitles, man. This shit went like into mine. Mine. You Guess ball, no way, mine. What if he came out of the third toothpick edge? Mine. Oh, yo, man, mine. You gonna read my subtitles, mine? But I think the, the story in this, though, is, is like she develops this dementia and it really starts to affect her over the span of like a month, right? Isn't that what they said in the scene there? It just really started showing quickly. You know, I mean, I... Yeah, I guess that could happen. If you're asking me, like, theoretically, like, there's cases like that where it's, like, rapid deterioration, but that's not usually the case. And I doubt seriously that, like, that was the case with his mother. Um, But, um, yeah, so, I mean, the opening of the movie, it's one long, continuous shot of them getting up, getting up for the day. And we're talking, when I say one long, continuous shot, fuck what was it like 20 straight minutes of them yeah yeah, just waking up for the day and everything and essentially what this movie is is you're really following their day-to-day lives argento's character louis older man kind of in poor health as well i think they said that he has like heart issues and breathing issues and everything and of course his wife l has you know the onset dementia and she's really like her performance in this is pretty spot. I mean, it seems like it's pretty spot on because she seems really, really confused throughout yeah. most of the movie, wandering around in the house, you know, from one place to the other, um, not really knowing what she's really doing. Right. So, I mean, I think that she did like a fantastic job. Um, and I'm not familiar with her, of course, because she's a French actress, but like an older actress, probably like late sixties, early seventies, I'm guessing. Yeah. I mean, I know she'd been in like some artsy fartsy movies, but like nothing I'd ever seen or anything like that. <laughs> like, yeah. like she was in seven horsemen on bareback or some shit. <laughs> She was on the IFC network on some show that nobody watched. The, the Battle of Antilles. <laughs> so it's kind of like uh, they're showing their daily ritual. You know, the opening scene, She's she gets away from Louie and is, 
you know, in a local market or whatever, and it's him trying to find her and everything. So you get the, get the idea of what their dynamic is like. He cares for her, of course, as his wife and everything, but he's also kind of annoyed with her. So once, Mm -hmm. you know, it's once he gets her back, he kind of goes into his daily routine in there with all of his basically stuff. He's basically us, except he's really into like books and movies. So, I mean, like, because there's, there's, there's a whole thing in the movie where like, um, they have a son, the son comes over and he's a drug addict and Mm -hmm. he wants them to go into like an assisted living facility, which would make perfect sense because how like bad she is. But he's like, you know, Argento's like, no, I don't want to do that because of all my stuff. Like, I don't want to leave the apartment and all my stuff and shit in here. And it's like, yeah, but your wife's fucking slowly yeah, deteriorating. She's from in dementia. bad shape, boss. Or quickly deteriorating. Yeah. But yeah, so he, he's like, no, I don't want to do it. And then what happens, happens. But there's that's the interesting part about this movie, to me anyway, aside from like the the look at death and and dementia and all that which was the look at like the inability to give up things and Mm -hmm. like just to step away from things even though you know that like your time is short like you still clinging on to that yeah the like aspects of this definitely reminded like it hit close to home with me for sure because my dad was very much like that so, and I remember shortly before he passed away, like he was like, uh, we were kind of joking. We'd always joke about just taking all of his books to the, you know, throwing them away or put, taking them to Goodwill or whatever else. And he was like, boss, I don't give a fuck what y'all do with my books <laughs> once I'm dead and gone. But until then they're staying right here. <laughs> uh, I won't need them. <laughs> So whenever I'm dead, you do whatever the hell you want to with them, but they're staying here until then, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. So very, this, yeah, very cl- similar approach here. I feel like. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, but like I said, he, he, he loves his wife, but he's also annoyed. They kind of live together, but apart as well. Like that's yeah. another, like a smaller apartment complex that they live in but you know he's got his own separate area with all of his stuff that he stays most of the time um and it's really i guess the following that chronicling their final days um in this movie uh definitely a drama one of the more depressing movies that i've seen in a long freaking time this isn't a feel-good movie at all no um and you know has a little bit of a twist towards the end um because you're all, you're totally expecting you know the well i'm not going to give it away i don't want to give it away because i do i actually do recommend people at least check this out now is this a movie that you'll rewatch a lot no i don't think you'll ever rewatch it but no, i think it's i don't think i will i think it's one that you should check out like i was surprised argento did a really really solid job in it for somebody that's never acted before. And it's yeah, obvious. That's, that's I was going to say it's obvious though that the, you know, that he was toe to toe with his Francois Lebrun who, I mean, I don't know her, but I mean, I'm sure she's a seasoned actress did a fantastic job in this. And he, I mean, hell he fit right in, you know, so he so didn't the, look like somebody that was inexperienced. I think that he, that, that they made a really good decision in this regard, like almost everything i read on up on this too almost everything in this movie is improvised the dialogue like they had a rough script and everything but like almost all the stuff in it is and i think that's probably a good idea especially for somebody like argento because like if you're not used to being an actor or anything like that but they give you kind of like you know control creative control to do like whatever and and kind of create like whatever you want to create right i think that that probably freed him up quite a bit and he's worked with a lot of actors. I'm sure he knows like what he should do, like what there is to do and all that too. But yeah, that was the most surprising part of this whole movie to me was that he was as good as he was. Like he's really, really good in this movie. I don't think he's as good as she is, but she like does like an exceptional job Mm -hmm. playing that kind of role. 
So, I mean, he's definitely above average for that, for what he's trying to he's do. He's like Mike Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like that. <laughs> Something else though, they, there's the scene, the, the final scene with Argento, right? I'll just say that. That was crazy realistic too. Yeah. Cause there's a couple yeah. of occasions like one of the things that I always thought back was when Jerry Lawler had that heart attack on uh, TV and the noises that he made and shit. Mm-hmm. So and again, I'm, I don't mean to give any of it away, but we right. might as well fucking talk about it, man. Like, yeah. I mean, and then, and we're going to talk about this in another movie too. Like it's not, we, a, it's it doesn't not, end you know, well. Yeah. Like you can expect that. I think from a gas for, um, no, it feels uh, no Gaspon. when they show like Argento right before they put the, you know, the cape over him or whatever they call it, that looked frightening like a dead person. Yeah. Like, I don't know what they did, but cl- like he clear, he really did look like he's, he was dead there. And like, I don't know what, what effect you call that or. Or what, but yeah, that was one of the aspects that I think this movie and another movie we'll be talking about did in a couple of scenes that was kind of like terrifying. I don't know what the maybe somebody that's in the know would know uh, no way. Um, what they did, <laughs> you're in the no way, you're in the no way, eh? no way. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I don't know though, you could look at it one, one of two different ways, right. Like, you could look at it as, I mean, if you've ever experienced anything like this, like, or have anybody that has been through something like this, I could see 100% why this would be, like, an impossible film to watch. Mm -hmm. Because it's very realistic and very, like, depressing and very just real. Like, it's not like like a movie like tom hanks ain't showing up and fucking doing you know one-liners or anything like you know what i mean like it's not that type of movie it's the most un-hollywood movie you'll probably yeah. ever see so there's nothing really redeeming there's, yeah i can there's completely not a, get it yeah if you don't there's not watch a this movie. wrapped up ending with a bow on it in this one for sure no but it's re- it is realistic and oddly enough know. it has the best reviews of any film he's ever done too like including irreversible and uh it was the end of the void or something like that mm. like so yeah it's his most critically acclaimed movie i don't know how audiences feel about it I, can you imagine going to a movie theater and watching this fucking movie like no i feel like <laughs> you'd just be like bum the fuck out the whole and i there's a place for movies like that but not at the movie theater i don't think yeah, I mean, like I said, I think that this is really an effective movie and really very, I mean, extremely well done. Gaspar, in a way, all bullshit aside, that guy's a very talented filmmaker. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I really, I wouldn't say that I love this movie. It's not a movie that I would probably ever own in my collection. But man, it hit. Like, especially like you said, if you have ever been in a situation similar to this, taking care of a loved one, been around when a loved one passed away, uh, it definitely like it. Yeah. It's very realistic, very well done. And yeah, I mean, like you said, it's probably his best movie, I guess. Depending on, you know, your preference. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly like his most straightforward movie of anything. Um, and I really do like the two screen, like the dual screen idea, like, and the way that that's executed in the movie. Like, I think that that really adds something to it. Like once you figure out like what he's doing with it mm-hmm. and you look back at the movie and kind of like pick it up from that, from that perspective. Yeah. And a lot of the time it really is just the same shot in a different angle. Yeah. You know, so imagine how like, it'd be like putting a damn puzzle together yep (laughs) you know it is so but yeah i mean that is vortex i think that this one is only out in europe on blu-ray anyway but if you want to check it out voodoo has a 
copy you can rent on there you can purchase i'm sure other streaming sites do as well dario argento's acting debut i don't know if he's ever going to act in another movie again but yeah i mean very i thought it was very impressive actually it was um, I mean, for him, especially like if it had been anybody like, you know, just an actor, you wouldn't have really thought about it. But I mean, the fact that it's him is doubly impressive to me. Give us the thumbs up. Off you butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a fuck. Ooh. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> let's, let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, I need to do that. No, don't you yeah. dare do it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirt. On T Public, there are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're gonna love them. Shop.deadpit.com. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1. We ain't-